I never believed in fate, not until the day I bumped into Alex at the department store. It was one of those busy sale days, the kind where you find yourself elbow to elbow with strangers, all hunting for a bargain. That's where our story began, amidst the chaos and the discount signs. I'm Sarah, by the way, a librarian with a love for quiet spaces and the rustle of pages. My life was simple, routine, and I liked it that way. Then, Alex stormed in, like a character out of one of those romance novels I secretly enjoyed during my lunch breaks. He was a sales manager, a man who thrived in the hustle and the bustle, a stark contrast to my own world. Hey, watch it. I snapped as someone's hand brushed against mine, reaching for the last lamp on sale. I looked up, ready to unleash my frustration on the intruder, but my words faltered. There he was, Alex, with a grin that could light up the dim aisle we stood in. Sorry about that. He chuckled, his hand still on the lamp I had my eyes on. But I saw it first. I raised an eyebrow, unimpressed. Dream on. I've had my eye on this since I stepped into this aisle. The banter could have ended there, with one of us walking away in defeat. But Alex, with his easy charm, suggested, how about we grab a coffee instead? My treat. You can tell me all about the other bargains you've snatched today. I was taken aback. Men like him didn't usually notice women like me, women who preferred the background, the sidelines. Yet, there was a sincerity in his eyes that caught me off guard. Against my better judgment, I found myself nodding, a small smile, creeping up on my face. The coffee shop was crowded, but Alex found us a quiet corner. As we sat, sipping on our drinks, the conversation flowed effortlessly. He talked about his job, how he loved the challenge, the thrill of closing a deal. I shared my passion for books, how each page whisked me away to a different world. You're interesting, Sarah, he said, his gaze intense. Most people I meet are all about the surface stuff. But you, you've got depth. I could feel my cheeks heating up at his words. No one had ever described me like that before. And you're not what I expected, I admitted. I thought sales managers were all about the hard sell, the smooth talk. Alex laughed, a deep, rich sound that filled the space between us. Guilty is charged. But there's more to me than just the job, you know. We talked until the coffee shop began to close, neither of us wanting the night to end. It was then that Alex asked for my number, his phone already in hand. I'd like to do this again, Sarah. Without the argument over a lamp. I hesitated, a part of me wary of stepping into unknown territory. Yet, as I looked into his eyes, I saw a glimpse of something more a connection I couldn't quite explain. So, I gave him my number, setting the stage for what would become the most tumultuous chapter of my life. Our chats turned into dates, dates into a relationship, and before I knew it, Alex and I were standing at the altar, promising each other forever. We moved into his house, a cozy little place that soon felt like home. Our dreams of starting a family, however, proved to be a challenge, testing our bond in ways I never imagined. Life has a way of flipping the script on you, doesn't it? For years, Alex and I chased the dream of having a kid, running the gamut of tests only to be told by doctors to keep the faith. We did, until we didn't. Somewhere down the line, hope turned into acceptance that it would just be the two of us. Only, that acceptance brewed a distance between Alex and me, a gap that widened with every late night he spent at work or with his buddies while I was left to stare at the empty rooms of our home. I tried, really tried to bridge that gap. Alex, maybe we should see someone, you know, a professional to talk about this, I suggested one evening, mustering all the courage I had. He looked at me like I'd suggested selling the house to join the circus. They shrink? For what? So they can tell us how to talk to each other? No way, Sarah. And just like that, the conversation was over before it even began. But life, unpredictable as ever, had another curveball in store. Feeling off one day led me to the hospital, tests, and then the shocker of a lifetime, I was pregnant. The joy of it overwhelmed me, a joy I couldn't wait to share with Alex. His reaction, though, was as cold as ice. Pregnant? 
Sarah, you know how old you are, right? You're an old 39-year-old woman with your sores and problems. This, this is risky, dangerous even. Maybe we should think about not going through with it. His words hit me like a slap. Not go through with it? Alex, this is our baby, our miracle. But the Alex standing in front of me wasn't the man I married. This version was distant, cold, and calculated. A miracle? Or a mistake? Think about it, Sarah. Pregnancy was anything but easy. My body felt like it was on a roller coaster, and my heart? Well, it was breaking. Alex's visits were few and far between, each one more awkward and strained than the last. Coming home from the hospital only meant returning to a house that felt less and less like a home. You're not even working, Sarah. I'm out here, busting my ass, and for what? So you can play house? Alex threw those words at me one night, his frustration boiling over. I bit back the hurt, the anger. Playing house? Is that what you think I'm doing? I'm carrying our child, Alex. Our child. But it was like talking to a wall. A wall that was packing its bags and moving farther away from me with each passing day. Our conversations dwindled to nothing, our interactions mere ghostly encounters. The man I once thought I'd grow old with had become a stranger, passing through the life of me and our soon-to-be child like a ship in the night. When I thought I'd faced the toughest battles, life proved me wrong. Giving birth to Daniel was both a miracle and a storm's beginning. Barely catching my breath from labor, the doctors hit me with news that felt like a punch to the gut, Daniel was sick, they said, he will be disabled, and everything that an ordinary child can do will become inaccessible to him. Hearing that, I felt my world tilt. It was one of those moments where everything slows down, and all you can hear is your heartbeat loud in your ears. But I had to be strong, for Daniel. I was reeling, trying to wrap my head around this new reality, when Alex walked into the hospital room. His face was stone, eyes cold, a harbinger of the storm to come. Sarah, what's this I hear about Daniel being sick? His voice was sharp, cutting through the sterile air of the hospital room. I swallowed, trying to find the words. The doctors, they said he has a serious condition. But we can. Serious condition? Alex interrupted, his voice rising. He is an invalid, a worthless person. And whose fault is that, huh? You had to push for this, didn't you? At your age. His words shocked me. A worthless person? Alex, how can you say that? We wanted him, we tried for him. Wanted? He laughed, a harsh, bitter sound. I wanted a healthy child, Sarah not a lifetime burden. Do you have any idea how much this is going to cost us? How much he's going to need? I felt my heart break, piece by piece. He's your son, Alex. Our son. How can you talk like this? Alex paced, a caged animal looking for an escape. No, Sarah, I can't do this. I won't. I want a divorce. The word hung in the air, heavy and final. A divorce? I echoed, disbelief and pain mingling in my voice. Yes. And I want it clean and quick. I'll take the house, you take the kid. That's it. I was speechless, watching the man I thought I knew transform into a stranger. And what about Daniel? My voice was barely a whisper. I want nothing to do with him. You'll have to sign papers saying I gave up all rights. That's my condition. The absurdity of the situation hit me then. This was no longer the man I married, this was someone else entirely. I agreed, not because I wanted to, but because I knew Daniel and I were better off without him. Leaving the house we shared, the life we built, felt like tearing away a part of myself. But as I held Daniel close, I knew it was the start of something new, something ours. Then, the final blow came. Friends told me Alex had moved someone in almost immediately after I left, a young, pregnant woman. The pieces fell into place, the late nights, the detachment. He'd been living a double life, and now he was starting a new chapter, without a backward glance. Starting over, was no walk in the park. 
With Daniel in my arms and my life in shambles, I found myself on the doorstep of a new beginning. The house we moved into was modest, nothing like the one I'd left behind, but it was ours, and that made it perfect. I was ready to devote my whole life to my special baby. But the day the doctor told me there had been a mistake with Daniel's diagnosis was the day my world shifted on its axis. For years, I'd braced for a life of challenges, of endless doctor visits and sleepless nights. Then, suddenly, we were handed a clean slate. I'm terribly sorry for the error. Your son is perfectly healthy, he'd said, looking both relieved and embarrassed. I could have been angry, but all I felt was an overwhelming rush of gratitude. Daniel was going to be okay. We were going to be okay. I threw myself into motherhood with a vigor I didn't know I had. Those early years were a blur of milestones, of first words, first steps, and countless firsts that filled our days with joy and our hearts with love. My grandmother's inheritance was a blessing, a safety net that allowed me to focus on Daniel, without the weight of financial worries. When the time came, selling her house felt like closing one chapter and opening another, right here in our new home, where every corner whispered of new beginnings. Returning to work wasn't just a financial decision, it was about reclaiming a piece of myself that had been on pause. The library, with its familiar smell of books and the quiet hum of day-to-day -day business, welcomed me back like an old friend. Back to the grind, huh? Jake, my colleague, had said with a grin on my first day back. He'd been manning the fort while I was away, and his casual chaos was a stark contrast to my need for order. Yeah, someone's gotta keep you in line. I shot back, slipping into the easy banter that had always made our workspace lively. Adjusting to the rhythm of working life, of juggling schedules and snatching moments with Daniel between shifts, was a challenge, but one I embraced wholeheartedly. Daniel, for his part, thrived in school, his curiosity boundless, his energy infectious. Mom, did you know sharks never run out of teeth? If they lose one, another grows back, he'd say, bursting through the door with facts and stories that turned our dinner times into adventures. Our life, once shadowed by fear and uncertainty, was now lit by the steady glow of routine and the unexpected joys of daily discoveries. The library, once a quiet sanctuary, became a place of lively learning, not just for me, but for Daniel too, who saw it as a treasure trove of knowledge. Mom, when I grow up, I'm gonna read every book in here, Daniel declared one afternoon as he helped me reshell books, his small hands struggling with the weight of a particularly thick volume on dinosaurs. I laughed, ruffling his hair. That's quite the goal, champ. But if anyone can do it, it's you. The Christmas party at Daniel's school was something straight out of a holiday card, twinkling lights, children's laughter echoing off the walls, and the air filled with the scent of pine and gingerbread. I was there, mingling with other parents, sipping on too sweet punch, and keeping an eye out for Daniel, who was a blur of energy and excitement among his peers. Suddenly, Daniel appeared by my side, his eyes sparkling with anticipation. Mom, you've gotta meet Tommy, my best friend. His excitement was infectious, and I let him tug me through the crowd towards a boy who was looking equally eager. As we approached Tommy and his parents, my heart skipped a beat, then sank like a stone. There stood Alex, my ex-husband, with that woman, his new wife, the one he had left us for. The shock on his face mirrored mine, but any semblance of a civil reunion evaporated with his next actions. Alex's protective hand clamped down on Tommy's shoulder, pulling him back as if drawing a line in the sand. Tommy, stay away from him, he barked, nodding towards Daniel, with undisguised contempt. I don't want you mixing with that boy. He's, not right. The words were a slap, a brutal reminder of the man Alex had become. Excuse me? I managed, my voice sharp with disbelief and rising anger. What did you just say about our son? Alex, unfazed, met my gaze with that cold, arrogant look I remembered all too well. You heard me. I'm not having my son play with someone, defective. The ugliness of his words stung, but I squared my shoulders, refusing to let him see how deeply they cut. Defective? Daniel is perfectly healthy, Alex. Not that you'd care enough to know. 
His smirk was infuriating, a clear indication he believed he had the upper hand. Oh, I know you'd like to think everything's fine. But let's not pretend you didn't mess him up with your choices. Before I could retort, his wife, a bystander until now, chimed in, her voice laced with concern. Let's not make a scene, darling. We're at a school event, remember? Alex shrugged, his gaze still locked with mine. She needs to hear the truth. Besides, we're doing much better now. My wife is rich, and her father owns the company I work for. He draped an arm around her, a show of possession more than affection. I looked at her, this woman who had unknowingly dismantled my life, and then back at Alex. Doing better? By teaching your son to judge and look down on others? By spreading lies? Alex laughed, a sound void of any warmth. Oh, Sarah, always so dramatic. We've moved on to bigger and better things. Something you wouldn't understand. His words were meant to sting, to show off his supposedly better life. But looking at him, all I felt was pity. Money doesn't buy decency, Alex. Or kindness. As they walked away, Daniel looked up at me, his young face etched with questions and hurt. Mom, why did he say those things? Why doesn't he want Tommy to be my friend? I knelt down, taking Daniel's hands in mine, searching for the right words. Sometimes, people say unkind things because they don't understand or they're dealing with their own issues. It's not a reflection of you, my love. You are perfect just the way you are. Daniel nodded, though I could see he was still processing the harsh exchange. Are we still going to have fun tonight? He asked, his voice small. I smiled, brushing a stray lock of hair from his forehead. Of course, we are. Nothing and no one is going to ruin our night. Let's go enjoy the party, okay? After the Christmas party debacle, I tried to push Alex and his hurtful words to the back of my mind. Life with Daniel was full enough, without dwelling on past pains. But fate, it seemed, wasn't done with us just yet. A few days after the party, my phone rang with an unfamiliar number. Curiosity got the better of me, and I answered. Hello? Hi, is this Sarah? The voice on the other end was hesitant, unsure. Yes, speaking. Who's this? It's, it's Julie. Alex's wife. Her voice wavered, like she was bracing for an onslaught. I paused, taken aback. Julie? What can I do for you? There was a heavy sigh. I, I wanted to talk to you about what happened at the Christmas party. And, about Alex. I tensed, memories of Alex's words still fresh. All right, what about him? Julie was silent for a moment before continuing. I heard what he said to Daniel. And to you. I, I didn't know about any of this. About how he left you, about Daniel. He told me a different story. Her admission sparked a mix of emotions in me, but I kept my voice even. And what story did he tell you? That you two grew apart. That the divorce was mutual. He never mentioned. He never said anything about Daniel being sick or. Julie trailed off, but her meaning hung heavy between us. I sighed, feeling an unexpected pang of sympathy for her. Julie, Alex has a way of twisting the truth to fit his narrative. What happened at the party, what he said. That's the real Alex. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. She was quiet for a moment. I want to apologize, Sarah. For him. For what he said. It was unforgivable. And I. I'm going to confront him. He needs to take responsibility. We said our goodbyes, a mutual understanding hanging between us. After we hung up, I sat phone in hand, pondering the strange turn of events. Alex's lies unraveling at the seams, and Julie, caught in the crossfire, seeking truth. Two weeks later after Julie's unexpected call, my phone rang, slicing through the quiet of the evening. The screen flashed his name, a reminder of a chapter one thought I had closed for good. With a sigh, I answered, bracing myself for whatever came next. Sarah, you've ruined everything. Alex's voice was sharp, tinged with desperation and anger. 
I pulled the phone away from my ear for a moment, taking a deep breath before responding. Ruin everything? Alex, whatever's happening is on you, not me. He was practically seething on the other end. Julie's leaving me. She found out about how I treated you, and then she got detectives on me. Found out I. I messed up again. I couldn't help but let out a bitter laugh. So, let me get this straight. Julie left you because you're the same lying cheat you've always been, and somehow this is my fault. It wouldn't have happened if you hadn't talked to her, he accused, his logic as flawed as ever. Alex, I didn't tell Julie to hire detectives. And I didn't make you cheat. You did that all on your own, I said, my voice firm, devoid of any sympathy I might have once had for him. There was a pause, and when he spoke again, his voice was laced with a desperation I hadn't heard before. I've lost everything, Sarah. Julie's dad fired me from the company. She's taking the house, the cars, everything. I have nothing. I shook my head, even though he couldn't see. And you think this is my problem because... Because we were married once. We have Daniel. And, and I know I've been terrible, but I've changed, Sarah. I've realized everything now. Please, can we try again? For Daniel? The audacity of his request left me speechless for a moment. Alex, you haven't changed. You're only sorry because you got caught and lost everything. And even suggesting we try again? That ship didn't just sail, it sank. Daniel and I, we're doing fine. Better than fine, actually. And we don't need someone who only comes around when they've hit rock bottom. But I have nowhere else to go. He pleaded, his voice breaking. That's not my problem, Alex. You made your bed, and now you have to lie in it. Alone, I said, my tone final. He tried to argue, to bargain, but I cut him off. No, Alex. This is where it ends. You need to figure out your own life, without dragging us down with you. Goodbye. I hung up before he could say another word, the finality of the gesture making my heart race. It was done. I turned off my phone, not wanting any more disruptions for the evening. A couple of months after the whole debacle with Alex, I got a call out of the blue from Julie, his now ex-wife. She wanted to meet up, kids in tow, for a coffee chat. Curiosity peaked and a bit wary, I agreed. Daniel was always asking about Tommy, so I thought, why not? We met at a cozy little cafe downtown, a neutral ground of sorts. Julie was there with Tommy, both looking a bit apprehensive, but hopeful. Daniel lit up at the sight of his half-brother, and within minutes, the kids were chattering away like old times, the awkwardness melting away under their shared excitement. Julie and I found a quiet table, coffee in hand, a world apart from the chaos of our children's laughter. So, I heard you finally went through with the divorce, I ventured, trying to tread lightly. She nodded, a mix of relief and resignation in her eyes. Yeah, I did. It was, messy. But I'm out on the other side now. Feels like I can finally breathe again. I could relate, remembering my own tangled exit from Alex's life. I'm glad for you, Julie. It's not easy, walking away, but sometimes it's the only way forward. Julie sipped her coffee, then looked at me, a determination in her gaze. He showed his true colors, through and through. Made the divorce hell. But I'm glad it's over. And I've been thinking, our boys, they're half-brothers. Despite Alex being, well, Alex, I don't want Tommy growing up without knowing Daniel. Her suggestion took me by surprise, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. I'd like that, I admitted. Daniel's always asking about Tommy. They're good for each other, it seems. Watching our sons play, I couldn't help but marvel at how life had turned out. A few years ago, I never would have imagined sitting here, chatting with you, watching our kids play together, I said, a smile tugging at my lips. Julie chuckled, a sound of genuine amusement. Life's funny that way, isn't it? Throws you curves, and you end up finding family in the most unexpected places. Our conversation flowed easily after that, the initial awkwardness giving way to a shared understanding. 
We talked about the kids, about moving forward, about building a life after Alex. It was cathartic, in a way I hadn't anticipated. Driving home, Daniel, buzzing with stories about his afternoon with Tommy, I realized that this was what moving forward looked like. It wasn't just about leaving the past behind, it was about building something new, something better, from the pieces.